Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Let's Play Civ 6 as the Mare in the modded Let's Play. Things are going quite well. We are finding our way around the world, and uh, we're trying to develop our cities. It's a little bit of a struggle because some of our cities are, you know, struggling a little bit more than the others, to put it lightly. The one thing is, in Farakara, I already did purchase the granary, which we talked about last time. Last time, we we're, we're still kind of just like gently exploring the game. And I think I want to go for the trade dock first in here, because if I buy this, this will give me a trade route capacity as well as extra housing. But more importantly, that trade route capacity, I'll be able to use faith to fulfill that trade route, send it to my capital, pick up an extra little bit of production in here and uh, continue to grow this city. The city is growing very, very rapidly because it's working a lot of high food tiles, which is exactly what we want. Now I did spend faith in a way that was maybe a little bit inadvisable, but I think in the long term, sort of what we're looking to achieve this game, spending a little bit of faith like that is actually totally fine. Um, there is a barb camp here, which I don't like, especially because they're now spawning man at arms, which makes me a little bit more suspect to be sending my settlers out into the unknown in order to, uh, you know, extend my empire. So I think our plan this episode is, is really to identify and control settleable areas. So man, I could trade with Namadol, which would be seven gold right now, which is a trade route I super want to do. But the two production from trading with my capital is too important, as is the road here, which could be super helpful. So I'm going to send that trade route. That will give me just a smidge of extra production in here. I'll be able to use the growth coming from that too to work these tiles. And I'll be putting down a couple of mines in here too in the not too distant future. I do need another builder over here, but that may come from just like settling this or something. And speaking of settling that, I think that's actually not a bad idea if I go for a settler here in the next turn. I'll get a free builder from it, and then I can use the free builder to get those coastal wonders that I want a little bit easier. I like I like how this game is shaping up. I, I really like it when you have a game of Civ, and all of the decisions you're making kind of naturally feed into each other in a way that seems very, very sort of, you know, not natural is maybe the wrong wor word, but it feels sort of like, a, a good progression. Okay, he has no more gold to take, so I'll take that nine gold per turn. I'm selling off my excess luxuries. Try to take as much upfront gold as possible now, because I want to be using my gold to um, boost. Um, okay, we are working a lot of these holy site districts. Now, these holy site districts, they are worth, well, it looks like four faith, one food. So they're not bad. Four faith, one food isn't a terrible tile, but I think I would prefer to start locking in some of my tiles, like this two food, two production tile for sure. And eventually this two food, one culture tile, although technically that's worse right now until it is improved with a mine. I'd probably take the one food for production tile. Uh, right now I'm just looking to maximize my production. While sure, Faith, actually, mm, do I want, I think I want to at least work the one food for production tile there. Maybe I'll leave two of the people in that because Thinking about it, faith is build faith is settlers for me, which also by proxy is builders. So that's something I should be considering very, very carefully in this game. Uh, There's medieval fairs. It would be great if we could get the anchor what again because it's it's a great source of faith and it's also extra housing and stuff like that. Now this is the merchant quarter, which is the tier two building for the commercial hub which gives international trade routes plus one gold which i think is the baseline for commercial hub buildings in this mod it also gives you plus one gold bonus gold equal to the adjacency bonus of the district so if this district already has high gold adjacency you want to build a merchant's quarter plus one housing plus one citizen slot plus one great merchant point and plus two citizen yield so very very cool otherwise i think everything else is fairly standard here there's nothing special really except i do want to plug in merchant confederation because that's a very very powerful card for me so i'll get that slapped in and yeah i need to get commercial hubs and stuff like that it would be nice to get alliances in particular if i could secure an alliance like a like a economic alliance with shaka or something i don't know what i would go for with shaka but he has a relatively small empire so he's a good person to ally with because he won't outstrip my, my power level quickly i'll go for the extra governor title in recorded history can't really make a decision. Okay, so I could go for the mausoleum and the great lighthouse. I wanted to save money to buy the fishing dock. So let's see. Can I sell anything of enough value to get the fishing dock bought in here? Boom. Fishing dock purchase. So I can delete that pin now, which has given me a significant boost 
I'm going to faith purchase a settler and I'll bring this guy back eventually. Um, we're going to go for the Great Lighthouse first, I think. And the Great Lighthouse here for me is plus one movement for all naval units, plus three gold, plus four faith. That four faith is coming from my religion, which I super want. So let's go Great Lighthouse first. Uh, is there anything else I could buy in here? No, mostly I'm just waiting for growth. I think that's what I'm mostly waiting for in here. And we just need to get a builder over here to improve some of these tiles. And then the city will be will be churning. Getting Liang early could be quite good. I'm kind of wanting, I'm wanting to avoid Pingala because as cool as Pingala is, I want to try out some of the other heroes. So maybe if I go for Liang and put her, oh yeah, actually I put Liang in this city. No, I just put Liang in, in, in um, Fanganui because I'm building a builder and I'll, I'll just delay that builder by doing something like putting a couple of turns into a monument. See, 30% production towards city center, government plaza, diplomatic quarter, fairground and pleasure pier buildings. Neighborhood, cistern. Is there anyone that gives a boost towards wonder production is my question. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm just going to pick up Pingala. I'm going to put him into Opango. Opango is a good spot for him. He, uh, because it generates a little bit of science. It's also going for the Colosseum. Yeah, we're going for a wonder heavy opener here, which I'm, I, I like. I'm enjoying the, the wonder gameplay. Um, yeah, we can buy, we can buy tiles. Let's buy some tiles. Let's do it. Boosh. Oh, I culture bombed him too. I could have put my encampment here. Oh, I thought Coupe's culture bomb couldn't claim land. That is interesting. I would have definitely put my encampment here had I known that that was a possibility. That's cool. I thought I thought Coupe's culture bomb was one of those neutral territory only culture bombs, but it was not. And uh, you know, you learn something new every day about the games that you play. I have discovered Granada. Granada is not a bad one to have suzerainty of. I'm sitting on one envoy. I could take suzerainty of Bologna, and I think I will because that would give me. Ooh, yeah, let's do it. A little bit of air score, we get suzerainty of them, we get a little bit of extra great people points, which means a little bit of extra faith, a little bit of extra all that stuff, because great, you know, any excess great people points gets converted into faith. Probably would be a good idea for me to discover exactly where I want to settle this city. Mm, galley, not good. Definitely want to start hiring man at arms if I can. So I got a quad in my capital. Um, I would love to work on the stupa because that's worth a decent amount of faith. Uh, I think my priority, however, is on getting settlers and escorting them with these boats to far off places in the world. So we'll start work on that. You are waiting for Liang to be established, so that's fine. Keep as you were, soldier. I've got a three charge builder here. I can probably send off somewhere. This is going to be a problem for me, actually. I need to send I need to send my quads up here to the north to deal with this camp. He wants mutual open borders. I'll take the deal. Finding more city states. There's new deals available, possible sending off of cotton to people. More city-states are appearing, which is good news for me. I should really have upgraded this guy to a Toa before I tried to take on this camp, but, you know, I like to live dangerously. That's the kind of life that I lead. Got a galley, got a Byream. We can get these olives online, which should, in theory, be available to sell. 12 gold per turn or 110. Yeah, let's sell those off. We are selling tons off. Tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of resources. Now in Kahia, it would be cool if I could get the fishing dock wharf, cause that would um, maybe I buy the maybe I buy the granary in here. Opens. Mm. If I wait two turns, I can so I could buy the granary right now. Give the city plus two housing and plus one food. Okay, which is not bad. It's not bad, right? It needs housing right now because its food is being cut in half. Or I could get the fishing dock wharf, get plus two housing and plus two food. And plus two production. So I save for the fishing dock wharf. I think that's I think that's the move. Let's have a little explore here. So there's only that guy. I could maybe get my my Toa over here to go see if he can camp this camp for me. Clear the camp for me, not camp the camp. Oh yeah, I forgot. It's a new era. I should totally look into I should totally look into city state missions for sure. Let me go ahead and have a little gander here. A lot of people are looking for trade routes. Someone wants a trebuchet, great scientist. It's all a lot of um, trigger inspiration for mercenaries. So that's easy enough. Hang on, let me, let me get out my trusty notepad so I can start doing these. Because remember, every single one of these missions is worth one gold per turn for me because I have the card plugged in, Merchant Confederation, that gives me plus one gold per envoy. So this is like, this list of city-states that I can interact with is massive. So I've identified the easiest missions to do. 
There's somebody wants me to build a diplomatic quarter, which is usually just a good idea. So I'll get around to doing that for Geneva. I think there was somebody wants a horseman, which is an easy one to do. Then there was the inspiration for mercenaries, which kind of just involves building units, which feeds into the other horsemen and the skirmisher and the, I think someone wanted a trebuchet. So if I build a trebuchet, a horseman and a skirmisher, and maybe like one or two of the military units, I'll fulfill these missions. So I think Opango is going to be taking up some of the reins here. Now, I don't have skirmishers unlocked, so I'm going to prioritize that. And I don't, also don't have um, trebuchets unlocked. So that's going to be another thing I prioritize. However, I think I also had someone who wanted me to kill a unit with this to get naval tradition boosted. And I think that did actually, yeah, it gave me one with Granada, who I only just met. I think I already have two, two envoys with Granada, which is fantastic. I like how, I like how my capital city is written in caps compared to everywhere else. It's like plus 2.3 faith from Farah Karawara and plus 1.1 faith from Fanganui. And then it's like plus 33.4 faith from Tehogia Nuakupe. <laughs> it's like someone's yelling at me. This is where the yields are coming from. Great Library is around. I don't think Great Library is worth building. I don't think there's anything really new there for me. We do, however, have another governor title and I will pop that into researcher because I need that little bit of science once he's established here. That's worth seven science right there. I'm having trouble picking my next technology. So I'm just going to use this thing over here. Uh, I will grab naval thingy because I will be building harbors and getting double adjacency on harbors seems pretty good. I definitely need a builder in my capital. That's for sure. I think there's actually a city state up here to the north that I need to explore too. Well, that's right. I can build fisheries in my cities. That's something I hadn't considered to make these coastal tiles more workable. First uh, settler who I plan to go on a magical journey with has been completed. I actually need to incite these guys against someone to buy time. So who's nearby? I'm going to incite them against the Inca because I totally want to bring my own settler down there and uh if i can buy enough time to get down here and maybe hop up onto the coastline oh crap i'll need my own unit mm, that's not good i need to settle within three tiles of the city state before it appears so that i can prevent it because i want these luxuries for myself i don't want the city state to appear basically is what i'm trying to say i want to have control of this little peninsula area for myself so what do i do to make that happen Huh. Well, there's not much I can do. I should have just kept track of that. If I was able to get some man at arms, I mean, I spent like 400 gold just to buy me like five turns to get down here. Probably wasn't worth. Probably would have been better uses of my gold would be just to like try to conquer them. But hey, I'm a, I'm a game player. That doesn't mean I'm good at them. I don't think it actually makes sense to get a harbor in here. Like as good as the harbor is, like, do I care about the entropot and the haven and stuff? The, what does the Entropot do? So the Entropot is a tier 2 building that gives 3 gold per ally city-state The city-state as a trade route to, plus 1 production on all unimproved coast. I think that's the normal bonus. And international trade routes gain plus 1 thing. It has 1 housing, 1 citizen slot, and a great admiral point, and 2 gold. So then there's the Shipyard, which gives you extra production towards all naval units in the city, plus 1 production on unimproved coast. Bonus production equal to the adjacency gold bonus, plus 2 citizen slots, and plus two production on the citizen yields. Okay, that's seeming like pretty good. And then there's the Haven, plus one gold on all coast tiles for the city, plus one gold on all co ocean tiles, once electricity, double dip the cities on a different continent from your capital. Okay. All naval radio units train the city only require one movement point to pillage, plus one production on all unapproved coast tiles for the city. International trade routes gain plus one gold, plus two gold. Um, interesting. So they've made uh, they've made the choices here a little bit more complicated. I don't know if a harbor is worth it here. What am I, what am I doing with the city? I mean, potentially, if we look at things from like the right angle and squint a little bit, there could be there could be a national park up here somewhere. Like I feel like the best national park is on this deer, which just isn't worth it. it just ain't worth it. So we'll 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 scrap that plan. I'm gonna probably just go for a harbor. Let's go Diplo Quarter. Yeah, let's go Diplo Quarter. It's, it's a half it's a half price build. It's a good city to get it in. It's not an amazing city to get it in, but it's a good city to get it in. And we'll start Petra uh, the next few turns here. Oh my god, that is a lot of stuff on this island. Should have hired a man of arms. I incited these barbs against the Inca, so let's see what they do. Uh, not much of anything right now. Please the first technology of this era. There is apprenticeship. So we have access to the clothier, which is for sheep uh, things, and the brewery, which is for wheat. Plus one production to mines. We also have access to the Man of Arms and the Windmill. The Windmill is an industrial zone building. Standard adjacency if located on hills. Standard adjacent buzzy next to thingy. Can I be built in the same district with a watermill? Domestic trade routes gain plus one production. Plus one production. Plus one. There's a lot happening. 
It's a lot happening in this game. It's hard to keep track of it all. So I'm just not gonna. <laughs> I'm just gonna take a little bit more chill. All right, nice. My settler has big movement, big movement energy. Now my question is, if I can get into position correctly, okay, we can make some really cool moves happen. Where do I want to settle? In, in a perfect world, do I settle on the maze? Let's identify the things that we want. This is a, um, this is another continent, right? So it has, it has oranges, it has silk, and has a ton of really nice tiles. Um, but in particular, I want the oranges. The oranges are a priority for me because it's a luxury re resource I can't normally access. So there's kind of a part of me that wants to settle like here and make like a little bit of a canal city. However, there is a really, really good harbor here. And if I settled here, I'd have a sick as hell harbor, but like a really bad city tile wise. Like I would just never have good tiles to work. So I think we maybe accept the plus three harbor in this, make the canal city. Now that leaves me with room to settle on this maze. Now settling on the maze, not the greatest thing ever, but it would also prevent this camp from being a problem. I'm not sure if I can climb onto the land and settle that. Well, maybe science that a little bit. Then otherwise, like a city down here somewhere, and then maybe a city over here somewhere to grab that extra cotton. Like I'm thinking on that grassland hill right there. If we could get this to work, I think we're in the money. We met the Vatican City, a While couple of our guys Coliseum leveled up, stands, and we got the Colosseum. Oh, stand. baby. So the, the Colosseum, Colosseum provides two falls, things, two falls, or three things, two culture, two, two loyalty, and two amenities for each city center within six tiles. Now, that also boosted buttresses. We also switched naval tradition. A bunch of stuff happened this turn. So all of these cities now have a boost to their culture, their amenities, and their loyalty, which is sick as hell. I don't know how to explain that, but we got a really, really cool wonder. Really, really powerful. And the, the other bonus is that it will slowly generate tourism for me. Not much, not much, but just a trickle of tourism throughout the game is something. Vatican City was up here. I really need you guys not to advance. Man at arms there. I'm praying I can get this settler over in time. I absolutely need to faith buy a builder in my capital because I've got so many improvable tiles, especially if I can get a brewery like here. There's actually a disgustingly good brewery right here, possibly even right here. I think if I remember correctly, well, I'll, I'll talk about the brewery next turn when I have the chance. What's my next major tech? I actually don't know. Let's just pick up mercenaries. Mm, wait, no, that'll block me from getting a boost for it, which is one of my missions for my city states. Oh, we got a great admiral, which I think was a mission of... Uh, Samarkand. So, more envoys. Remember, every envoy I get is worth plus one gold per turn. Now that we finished the Colosseum in here, I think the city is going to build me a horseman. Spend a little bit of time completing that mission because I have to build a horseman, a skirmisher, and a trebuchet in order to fulfill my mission. All right, this is just this is just a lot. I'm gonna promote you with line of battle. You might be able to step up here and disperse this camp. Perfect. Your sacrifice will not be in vain. You may be able to escape next turn. You just have to survive. So I can build a clothier here. So let's have a look at the clothier. Um, actually, maybe in the tooltip it'll tell me. No, it just says plus one production. So I'll have to look up what does the clute note? What does the clothier do? The clothier uh, requires a sheep resource, which we understand. Plus one production for every adjacent pasture. Plus one gold to each pasture in the city. The bonus is doubled once you have industrialization. Plus one gold per industrial zone building to international trade routes from this city. As long as the city has access to at least one sheep resource, uh, it lowers appeal by one. So it's actually kind of an okay tile in cities with multiple pastures. In this city, it's kind of only eh. So I'm not super rushing to place this down. This would be a cool city to get an industrial zone, however, now that that has been said. So I may actually get it in Tamutu. And Farakara can actually just live without an industrial zone and instead put its energy maybe towards a holy site or something. But yeah, it's time I started putting mines down in the city. Oh, I could get a brewery too. Oh no. Uh, let's, let's just, let's just place the mine. I forget what the brewery does. I think, I think it gets boosts off of farms. Plus one food, plus one production. Plus one production for every two farms. Plus one gold to each farm over a resource in the city. Bonus doubled once you have electricity. Provides tourism. Plus one amenity. Okay, cool. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely want to get a brewery in here. Maybe on this forest tile. I hate giving up forest tiles, but mm, no, nah, maybe on the hill. Ooh, might not be a bad idea to get a brewery in Fang Nui. Have to wait till the city actually grows, though. All right, my Toa survived. Toa escaped. Boom. Barb camp appeared. Trade route, nice. We completed the trade route to Muscat, which means we have a trading post there, which means any trade route that goes through Muscat will be slightly more valuable. Let's trade with Nodwengu, I think, because we're getting a little bit of an advantage there. Although then again, I could go for gold. And Ulundi is pretty good. I could also trade with Nan Madal for an extra envoy, which is super worth it. So I'll do that for my capital. Finally, time to get these, these jade mines online. Man, I've been waiting for those for a long ass time. Sitting on two envoys. 
I could take Nazca. Could take Nazca here. Plus one food to adjacent desert and desert hill tiles. Plus one after discovering civil service. I'm about to get civil service. So Nazca might actually be a good pickup here for me. It would give me a decent amount of faith. It would give me a use for these. It would make these tiles better. Plus one production to adjacent flat tiles. Must be built. Can only be built on flat desert. Can't be worked. What are my other options? Valletta. Well, Valletta is cool, but I don't want to spend my faith on that right now. So I think we, I think we take Nazca. Oh, shoot. I need to... I don't have enough envoys. I thought I had an envoy in Nazca. I was misreading this. Damn it. Well, maybe I can reset my government. Nah, whatever. We'll put two in there and hope we get them. You know what we can do? We can take a money and put her into Nazca. Yeah, give me that Susan fee. All right, so I think a brewery here makes sense. Make that a 2-4 tile. Oh my god, look how cool that brewery tile is. That is so nice. Look at the little, the little tubs and the little copper things. Oh man, that is so cool. I definitely want to get this coffee. I'm going to pay the money. I'm going to pay the money, get the coffee. More luxuries, more better. More betterer? That's how I live my life. Boosh. It looks like Nagazagarmu is trying to clear this camp or explore it or something. I'm going to be super... I'm going to be giga mad when they refuse to get off this tile. Oh no, they're going to refuse to get off the tile. Where are you, Nagazagarmu? Where are you? Get off the tile, dude. Just move so I can settle this. I built two settlers in my capital. I definitely want to trade with Nan Madal because that's worth a envoy. I'll place the civic square in my capital. I need to think about more districts though. Up to 13 pop in here. Yeah, man, it's tough, it's tough, it's tough. I don't even have a monument in my capital. I don't think I'm gonna go for fair ground. Preserve is kind of cool, but it doesn't make sense for me. Oh, more settlers, let's claim the world. Let's claim it, it belongs to me. I'm curious, what happens if you are here, you promote him with preparatory fire. All right, nice. One crossbowman down. I've got a bit of a glut of builders, like I have too many. And not enough tiles to try and improve. Ooh, I lost the quad. Ow. Well, that hurts. Well, we took care of the barbs that were on this island, which was the most important thing. They won't come back to bother me. I also built a horse, which gave me the boost with Vilnius. Perfect. Horsemen will go on to do many useful things for me. The other unit I wanted was a skirmisher. I could build a scout and upgrade. How long? Two turns? Yeah, that works for me. Scout and upgrade. Sounds good to me. Do the same thing with the catapult. Saves me a bit of time. Uses my gold efficiently. Monarchy kind of appeals to me. Maybe theocracy? Yeah, theocracy is super cool for my game right now. Uh, so let's go to theocracy. Uh, let's, let's chop to finish. Oh, I thought that would finish. I thought that would be a lot more production there. That was not as much as I was hoping. I thought that would actually finish it. I guess I was a little bit over ambitious there. Okay, dude. Dude, you need to move. You're screwing my entire plan here. Oh, man. I got screwed by the AI here. I, f I feel like this guy should move. The fact that he didn't upset me. Because I can't, I can't buy more time. And there's goddamn... Why aren't these being attacked? I don't understand. This doesn't make sense to me. I incited these guys. That's annoying as hell. That my first settler expedition has been screwed by what feels like RNG. It's at minus six over here. Shouldn't be that bad. All right, let's start Petra. I reckon Petra goes here. Boosh. 37 turn Petra. <sighs> not the fastest, but not the slowest either. That's the thing. I've had worse Petras. Man, that's upsetting. If I had a, if I'd have known that that was a possible outcome, I would have maybe um, taken suzerainty of Nagazagarmu and moved their units or tried to kill something or something. Or maybe tried to move a couple horsemen down, which I could have done in time had things been slightly different. But sometimes, sometimes the game finds very strange and like out there ways to screw you. We got our encampment in Kaya. So I will place the harbor, but I don't intend to build it yet. Because I want to get those ancient walls up. If I, if I have a solid line of defenses over here, I'm feeling pretty confident. If I don't, I am not. This is, this is infinitely triggering that I'm being, um, I'm being blocked so hard here. Um, I can at least get this city down here and then maybe look into purchasing and stuff. But man, that's upsetting that the city state went through. That's, that's two two copies of silk that I should have had that I'm not gonna now. Probably should should look into evangelizing my religion. There's the Great Lighthouse. Perfect. Plus one movement for my naval units. We just unlocked machinery, which gives me access to Kilwa. Kilwa is gonna be a priority for me, I think, this game. Three envoys when you build it. Bonuses for being suzerain. It's so good. Uh, the hammer works is a cistern building that is unlocked at machinery. Gives plus one, a cistern in this district gets plus one production and a further plus one production for every two adjacent districts. It gives plus two combat strength for all units trained in this city. Wow, that is really, really powerful. 
Holy crap. Plus two. Plus two combat strength is, is huge, by the way. Um, it's equivalent to flanking bonus, which um, can be the difference between just like auto winning and, uh, or auto losing a fight. Uh, provides water, renewable water sources, uh, provides from once in the future era. Plus 50% production if the city has a water mill or an improved iron. Uh, plus two science, plus two citizen slots, plus one science, plus one production. Oh, wow. So this is an interesting one because it requires either an encampment, a campus, or an industrial zone. Uh, wow. All right. That's interesting. Hammerworks. All right. I like it. Uh, scout upgrades to skirmisher. That way I get the Bologna city-state mission. Settlers heading out this way. I don't like it. Boom. I could have totally... If this unit wasn't here, I could have totally achieved what I wanted to and needed to. I'm... Dude, I'm raging. I'm currently... I'm a, I'm a raging barbarian right now. Coastal city, granary first. Don't think I care about the harbor. What do I want to build in here? I don't know. We'll, we'll go granary first and we'll plan the city out a little bit more later. Uh, but we got our great lighthouse. We have good production in this city. So we can grab ourselves the Colossus. And in my capital, I will 100... 100% be going for Kilwa. And in fact, I will kill this tile for Kilwa. Mm, actually, right here, adjacent to my... Th yeah, 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 yeah. So I just need like a little bit more gold. Hang on. Sell you my pearls. Sell you my coffee. Anything to buy? Nothing to buy. Come in here. Buy this tile. Boom, boom. Kilwa. 23 turns on Kilwa. Finish that settler. Kilwa is so important, I'm willing to delay my settlers by 23 turns. Um, and I'll just purchase them with faith instead. All right, here comes the God Fishery. Boosh. Look at that. Five food, three production. And that's before any of the wharf or harbor stuff has been built. I'm liking how this this mod interacts with coastal cities. It's very, very cool. Oh, wow. There's a tiny little island here that I never knew about. You do something fun with this. I like that. Yeah. Let's settle something here. Maybe, let's see, we could do a little, little science research. A little science research city outpost, maybe. Something like this. Have the two farms. Have a bit of fun with it. We could even maybe settle on one of the farms to open up other district options. Like this. Yes, Nazca line, boosh. Oh my goodness. That's exactly what we want to see. Plus one food, plus one faith on these tiles. And we're not even going for the pet. We haven't even got the petri yet. Mm -mm. This is, this is, again, I maintain that this is why people play Civ games. It's not for the theme, it's not for the, you know, cool mechanics, the heroes, the leaders. It's to see tiles have really big yields on them. That's why we play these games. 100% of the time. <gasps> Caguana has appeared. Yeah. Alrighty, Caguana. How's it going? I'm annoyed at where you appeared, but I'm okay with the fact that you did appear because Caguana is another cultural city-state that I can make friends with. I think it actually, technically, I was one of the first to meet them. So that's a nice advantage. I get that plus one culture from them. So let's get to work on the kill. But I feel like 20 turns is a reasonable number of turns to spend on a uh, on a district. And my question is, I never built my rice paddy thing in a pango. Feels like there's never enough tiles in your cities in this game. You're always so demanded. What do you get for cattle? Plus one production to all farms adjacent to a pasture in a city with at least one improved cattle. I don't think I have any, any cattle whatsoever. I think I settled on the only cattle I had in the game, which uh, big oof. Yeah, we'll pick up copper because I believe copper gives you a boost towards military units. Yeah, 15% towards all units and projects with at least one copper. Nice. 15% ain't much, but it's something. Any barb camps nearby? No, I can't buy, like, buy a unit over here to control the, control the land. My roads, uh, one thing I'm not sure I like about this mod is the addition of roads border popping from districts. It's kind of cool, but also maybe ends up making the game look a little bit worse. I don't know. Well, I'm I'm, I'm torn on it. I'm not sure yet. Call me Natalie Imbruglia, because I am I can't touch. I'm torn. Okay, that's what I'll say. I never I never knew how to say her name, and I I'm still not sure. And at this point, I'm afraid to ask. Ooh, a barb camp appeared here. This is perfect. I could hire a man at arms. I could spend my gold on more functional things. This is the stage of the game where most of my units that I don't want to directly control either get put on fortify or auto explore. So here's guilt. Nothing super new with this card wise, but there is a new building called the guild hall, which gives plus one gold to all resources in this city. International trade routes gain plus one gold. Plus one gold as well, just inherently. You get a citizen slot and a great merchant point and some citizen yields. So this would seem like it would be good in a city that didn't have a river. Like if I wanted a merchant guild over here in Tamutu. Very, very interesting. Uh, let's promote Pingala with Connoisseur. Get that extra little chunk of culture. Means this city is kind of carrying me 
in terms of culture and science right now, which I'm totally okay with. I have two more settlers heading down here. I should probably get a settler moving up this way. Um, it looks like some of these islands got claimed, but I definitely could get like some settlers out here. It's going to be my next big priority. Uh, great library has been built. Cool. Quite late into the game, actually. Surprised nobody has broken 100 science yet. Um, we're still only firmly into the medieval era. In fairness, I've been playing super suboptimally too. It's kind of on purpose, right? It's the advantage of playing one notch down from deity. You can take your time. You can explore mechanics. You don't have to play super hyper-optimized to win. You can play pretty casually and still uh, pull out the win if you're good enough. So I think I settle another canal city here. Yeah. Boosh. Not entirely sure what to do with this city, but I know culture, culture bombs from my coastal memes is on the agenda. I could give this city a kickstart with gold, and I kind of like that idea. So let's go granary. We'll purchase the monument, and then um, we'll tell it to work on the harbor. But I'll come back in here with more gold to buy the fishing dock, which will give these coast tiles some extra food and production. Kick the city into overdrive. All right, let's pop down a brewery in the capital. Nice one. Boosting these farms, getting boosted from the farms. I like the brewery models. It's uh, the, 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 not super attack. I'm still thinking about that ocean mod I was playing. Um, JNR does a great job. He's the guy who made these mods. He does a, uh, he does a great job with his model, modeling and stuff like that. I pop one settler into the city and then I think one is gonna transition through to grab these diamonds and the mercury. Cause I think that actually, yeah, that's another continent here. So we can pick up a couple extra luxuries if we just snake on down through this city. Snake on through to the other side. The horrible thing with Coupe is normally I'd be running around like chopping things out, but you don't want to chop with Coupe because the forests are worth, you know, good value. Make it a good value. Probably about the time I should consider building my uh, <laughs> my theater squares, but taking my time on that one. Uh, yeah, let's pop a clothier here. Just why not? Why not? Let's do it. I'm exploring new mechanics. I wanted to see what it looks like. No, it's cool. It's like a little fortified thing look it's got little cloth things um rolls of cloth things hanging out to dry like washing man he really nailed the look of like a civ 6 improvement did a great job so i don't understand why my unit my settler is for movement why can't he walk through this unit like it works like this on land units can walk through each other no problem it's like totally valid to do it, right? It's totally valid for two units on the same layer to walk through each other. But for some reason, some patch or other introduced this thing where units on the same layer can't walk through each other anymore. And it's causing this weird pathing error. And I think it is literally just a pathing error. Like, actually, mechanically, this should work. All right, boom. We now own the Gazgarmu. Well, I got the boost from mercenaries, which gave me Susan three of them. And this will become a trebuchet soon. So, oh, Pango, you have done great work for me. You've built many things and you have uh, perhaps neglected yourself. You got me the Colosseum, a great personal sacrifice. You've got a ton of room for stuff. Let's place that harbor. You deserve it. Uh, next up will almost certainly be the Civic, the Civic Square. You have a lot of coastal tiles you're working. Or at least a lot of coastal tiles you could be worked. And so that to me tells me I'd like a fishing dock in this city. Plus one food and production on all those fishing and ocean tiles and stuff like that. Um, but maybe library or school. The school's worth four science and it makes these things more workable. This, the library is more passive. If I built it now, it's the medieval era. It would build up over time. The city is going to be pretty big, though, in the long run, once I get, like, the fishing dock and stuff up. And the school is lower pressure for me to build. Now, I tell you what, I'll build the school. I'll set it to low priority. Then I'll grab the fishing docks to improve the coastal yields. Then I'll grab the monument. And we'll we'll check back in with this city. I really should build a cistern, too. Ooh. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah. Well, I need the science. I need the science. So I need the science. I need the production. I need the culture. And then I need the growth. And then we'll check back in with this with this city. So that city is going to be busy for a while. It's going to be because I want the city to be as tall as possible to generate as much science as possible. That's kind of like the logic of what I'm doing there. Now I could work on the consulate here. It's pretty good. Two science, two faith, two culture. Yeah, we just go straight for it. 20 turn builds, basically a wonder. So this city is starting to look a little bit more reasonable. We have, you know, Ancient walls, encampment, it's very well defended. Maybe two archers in here would be ideal. 
I'd have to get crossbowmen and I don't want to I don't want to spend the time getting crossbowmen. I could spend a little bit of gold in here helping the city, but I think some of these newer cities are a little bit late to the game. So I'd rather spend gold down here in this direction than over here up here where these cities are already a little bit developed and should be able to develop themselves quite quickly. This city is definitely lacking in terms of housing right now. And the main way I would get housing in here Pretty much everything I can build in here actually gives housing. So the real question is, which thing do I build that gives housing? Um, let's have a look at the target range. 25% experience to all ranged recon and siege units in this city. Gives you plus one production and uh, plus one production to those guys. This is combat strength for all cavalry units. Gives you extra production on horses. Okay. And then we have the barracks, which is a 50% combat experience for all melee and anti-cavalry units, but just gives you straight up two production. So it looks like the target range is the worst in terms of like raw bonuses in that it gives you a weaker combat experience bonus and it gives you less production. The stable is also slightly weaker on the experience front, but it has better potential if you have horses in the city, if you have a lot of horses. And then the barracks is the best in terms of bonus and production. Now, I feel like I'm going to be building... I feel like the barracks is the move. I'm not really going to be going on the offense. Barracks gives me the most production, gives me a little bit of housing. Is this what I want to build right now, though? It's only one housing. It's one housing and two production. In a city where I have a massive food surplus, I need housing now. So I reckon a fishing dock here gives me two housing and a bunch of food. So maybe granary fishing dock? Granary fishing dock, that gives me four total housing, but bring the maximum population of the city up massively and give it more food potential. And then we can kind of re-examine the city when it hits its higher potential. Ooh, the borders in here popped very nicely. Let's get that orange online, the citrus. Definitely want to go through here and make sure I buy all of these spare luxuries because that's what's been kind of carrying my empire a little bit, actually, getting all those spare luxes. Because if I go to my capital now and refresh, I come in here and check out this plus four amenities from luxury resources and I have a lot of cities now and they all should be in fact very very happy is there a way to check city status yeah look every city I have is ecstatic from these amenities I'm getting not entirely sure how that's the amenity system is different in this mod but I know that it is different there's divine rice nothing really different here it's all the normal stuff I don't think we're going to go for monarchy this game no, I don't think so 10 turns until medieval is over a little bit unfortunate I'm not going to be able to get a renaissance golden age which sucks I would have loved a Renaissance Golden Age. At least it's an opportunity to get a bunch of season teas. Um, let's take Geneva. Boom. Plus two era score. Probably sneak out two more settlers before this era ends. Maybe just one. We'll see. We'll see how she goes. World Congress time. I'm going to just put two votes into city centers and then I'll probably downvote great admirals. It's the most likely thing that people vote down. Typically in my coastal games where I go for harbors, although I didn't actually go for that many harbors. Well, great admirals were yeeted and encampments were boosted. That's Blast. odd. Oh. Very odd. Battle. We have access to the armory now because we just researched military engineering, which gave us nitre and armories as well as military engineers um, who can do really interesting things now and they are available a little bit earlier. Military engineers I think can be used to build cisterns and stuff like that so I may actually do that um, it depends on how expensive the cistern is probably worth it in the late game but not right now we also have the trebuchet which is part of our mission we will be upgrading someone to a trebuchet the armory gives you 50% production towards all melee anti-cavalry recon and ranged promotion classes units in this city plus one production to all strategic resources in this city the regular plus two production plus one citizen plus one great admiral point and then extra production towards the citizen yields very cool there is kind of a part of me that wishes there was a way to display just how much you're getting from working these. Um, I know it's like, if I hover over it, the specialists here, it says giving me 16 faith and four food. Like I know that's coming from the specialists, but I kind of wish there was a more obvious way to see it. Like if I come over here to the government plaza, I'm like, oh, I don't see what the specialists are doing. So I pop two people in here and then I hover over it and I say I'm getting two food for culture. Um, just, just a thought, just a thought in my head. Let's work on castles. Taking my, taking my time to appreciate the game. I boost up trebuchet because that's an extra envoy. Boop, 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 boop. Awesome. Another city down here. Get those horses for me. Delete that pin. Uh, this is another city I'm willing to spend a bit of money to boost, but I think I wanted to get the fishing wharf in Capiti first because that will significantly boost a lot of these tiles. I mean, two production from these tiles is pretty damn good. I kind of want commercial hubs, so... Yeah, let's work on a commercial hub in here, but let's go straight commercial hub. Maybe walls, actually, to defend against any of this nonsense. That's all she wrote, baby. This is the phase of the game that I really like. I'm, I'm churning out about 100 gold per turn, 
most of it is from my cities. A little bit is coming from envoys and deals and stuff. Now, if I wanted to really boost my gold income, I think getting cartography for the plus two gold from fishing boat improvements would be a good short slash long term goal. And it would also give me access to potentially the Venetian arsenal and some industrial zone stuff. I definitely need to get my industrial zone, but um, that's meant to happen in Ta Mutu, which just isn't ready for anything like that yet. I will prioritize a little bit more food in here and say prioritize food over production just for now. Well, we get the city figured out. Uh, let's let's plan this area. I feel like there's three cities in here. One over here, one over here somewhere, and one vaguely in this direction. So I reckon one here feels right to me. Pop you there. Although perhaps one, two, three. Perhaps a city here on the floodplain. And then another city here kind of on the edge. And then I definitely want to claim these diamonds. But this is kind of a low priority city. So we'll just... I'm gonna pop it over here. Boosh, 15 population has been achieved, which gives us two era score. We've also unlocked urbanization with that achievement. Long form content is going the way of your mother. It's into my YouTube channel DMs. No, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. I'm getting, you know what? I'm getting, things are getting loopy here. I'm gonna call it here. I'm gonna call this episode here. We only played like, like 27 turns here, but man, so much happened this episode. Like, in terms of learning about game mechanics, building things up. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!